Hello and welcome to a tour of Hammerhead. So this video is a bit rushed because this map was available on Friday and it was busy on Friday but I got enough rounds in and managed to do the spectator mode before I had to go out and hopefully it still shows you all the bits that you need to see. So as you can see it's a winter map and let's get started with the tour. So we're going to start from the US end and head towards A. Now A has a certain familiar feel about it. If you look at this arrangement of containers and a building, it's kind of like the team deathmatch area on Nonshar Canal. So this may well be the team deathmatch zone. So what we have at A are several stacks of containers and a simple warehouse building. So these containers stretch a long way around what is a dock area and as you can see they go an awful long way down this end. It's two and three container high at most and you've got some of the open containers on ground levels as well as hiding places. You don't seem to have any of the containers that run an angle letting you get up onto the second level. So it is pretty much just ground level running around a maze of containers down here. And although there are plenty of places to hide, there are also a lot of very long corridors. So it's an interesting place to fight, but it does lack a bit of verticality. If we go back to the other end of A, we can have a look at this building. And it's quite a plain building with... A bunch of containers out the back as well and we have a little dock area but the sea is currently frozen and this means that A is quite an important point to stop people looping around the map. Now on foot you can see that the buildings walls are all destroyable and it's quite a plane again it lacks any elements of verticality because there are no stairs up or any angled containers to let you get on top of this area. So the only way up onto the roof is going to be helicopters or spawn beacons. Out the back we've got a few more containers and here you can see the defensive view that you get from A. So any armour that's trying to loop around the map is pretty exposed out there. There's just the one island to give them any cover. So on that whole, A is pretty good. They could have just given it a bit more interest with the containers and let you get up onto different levels. From A, we go down this tunnel towards B and C. They're both in this little underground complex. And this is your close range infantry fighting area, which most of the final stand maps do seem to have. Now, if we move up to B, you can see it's kind of a test chamber. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but the flag is inside this central queue. So B is basically on two different levels. We have this upper level, which leads into the offices, and then that leads down onto the floor at B. We've got walkways around, and this glass does break but for some reason doesn't break for me. There are multiple ways to get into B. There's going to be about eight different ways. You can come through here from that central area. There's another corridor like that on the other side. You can get up onto this walkway which overlooks B and goes all the way around it and you've got this doorway which leads to the outside. And I'll show you where that leads out later, because here I'm about to die. So that kind of cuts off the tour a bit for a while. Okay, so back into spectator mode. And as you can see, we can go from B pretty quickly straight into this central fighting area. Where there's a submarine being built, which I assume is the hammerhead. And we've got what is frozen water running between these two areas but the water can be destroyed by explosions and if we sneak through we get to C. So C is a much simpler area than B. 
there's basically just a few different doorways into this spot and a couple of the larger doorways like that can be open and closed so C does have a walkway over the top but it's not easy to see anything from this walkway it's more to lead you back into this central area and the walkway doesn't link all the way across C so you'd have to come up here and then back into C in order to get down to the other side from the walkway so most of the fighting here tends to happen in that central area so in here rather than actually in C itself. C is the point you hold by controlling the central area. And the infantry combat in this central area is pretty good. Now it's not on the scale of Hangar 21, it's more on the scale of B on Whiteout. So that complex in Whiteout where they're making the grav tanks, this is a pretty similar kind of scale. So the central area moving over towards B is where most of the fighting goes on and C here is kind of a point you hold while you're doing it. Now there is a sneaky way into C and that's up the ladder in this broken elevator shaft or down it if you're coming from outside and that leads to this doorway here which is closed and in spectator mode you can't open it so I'll have to show you that entrance from the outside later as well but this is quite a nice little way of sneaking in to see now here you can see that one of the blast doors has been closed so you can't get in that way but you still have the little doorways that allow access to see if we move out back into the open and we can head towards D and in contrast to B and C, D is a pretty plain area. There's one pillbox, there's some porter cabins, and there's some ruined walls. And on the ground you can see this is not a place you want to be as infantry if there are helicopters around. There's really no cover here at all. And the porter cabins are going to get blown to pieces. So, yeah, you really don't want to mess around here. Now... The only reason to come here is to take the point and the XD1 is hidden in that pillbox. So you can kind of hunker down in there with the XD1, fly it around and shoot people with a minigun. Spectator mode gives you some idea of just how vulnerable you would be out here to a helicopter. But now let's leave D and head over to F which is a fishing village. And this is a bit more substantial. The buildings can all be destroyed, but there are quite a few of them and they're circled around a little harbour with a few fishing boats in it. It's quite a nice area to fight in because it's kind of classic battlefield bad company style. There's plenty of dodging around buildings, leaping over walls, shooting through windows, trying to run away as you see somebody trying to take out most of the building you're in. and you are still pretty vulnerable to armor but at least you have the chance of getting into visual cover if not anything solid to hide behind by the end of the map or if there's a sustained armored push then sure there's going to be literally nothing here but rubble but at the start and midway through the game it is pretty interesting infantry combat you know, there goes a building. I know there's a sniper over there, so I'm just going to level his cover and try and expose him. So this is the classic battlefield destructible base. The start infantry might have a bit of an advantage. By the middle, it's kind of even. And by the end of the map, well, the tanks have got an advantage because there's little for the infantry to hide behind anymore. And of course, by the end of the map, you really don't want to be here if there's an attack chopper around. And as this is the type of combat that Battlefield made its name on, it is kind of nice to see it back, even if it is only one base on one map. So let's get back into the air and check out the centre of the map and head over towards D. So this central section, as you can see, has got a helicopter pad at one end, 
a nice little mountainous area which is pretty good for sniping and you do get quite a lot of combat on here because there's another helicopter pad at this end and a helicopter spawns for both C and B but the helicopters don't spawn on the point they spawn outside and that effectively gives you two extra areas of the map you need to control. It's all very well taking C and spawning a helicopter out there, but if the enemy's outside, they get the helicopter. Now this is D, and this is a logging camp, and while those porter cabins are destructible, all of the logs here aren't. So this has got a bit more permanent cover. So. The infantry have a bit of an advantage on this side that they can hide behind permanent cover. And that makes the business of dodging tanks and helicopters a little easier. Porter cabins are still as destructible as normal. But the flag is pretty much surrounded by these log piles. And you can climb all over them, you can climb up them, you can run around them. They're pretty good actually. It's just a shame that D is kind of tucked out of the way and you don't get a lot of infantry fighting out here. But D is a nicely laid out base. It's got a variety of different areas and it leads down onto A. The problem with D is this central region here. All the infantry combat pretty much happens at B and C and on top of B and C because you've got both helicopter spawns there and having an extra couple of attack choppers is pretty important on a map that has several bases that are open to choppers. If we fly down through the tunnel you can see that the ice is starting to break up and we have sections of water. This will trap an LAV. It won't trap the hover tanks but the LAVs will fall into the water and get stuck. So you have to be careful taking normal tanks and LAVs through there. Other tanks, they can fit through there fine because they don't drop into the water. As a map on the whole, Hammerhead is pretty good. Each of the outside bases has a different kind of flavour. You've got containers on one, log piles on another, ruins on one, and the little fishing port on the last one. So you've got a different variety of fighting styles, You've got this mountain which is important to hold because of the two helicopter spawns and you've got the inside infantry combat area which gives those people that don't want to be constantly fighting tanks and helicopters somewhere to hide. And there you can see an LAV stuck in the water trying to blow its way out because once you're in there you can't get out. So if you want to send armour in there later in the game you have to use the hover tanks because they can just sail straight over the top of it. So there's been some really nice design work on this base and it kind of shows the weaknesses in Operation Whiteout. None of the capture points on Hammerhead seem to have that thrown together at the last moment feel. They all seem to have a style and a purpose. In comparison to the other maps in Final Stand, for me this comes second after Hangar 21. It's a much more enjoyable combat experience than Operation Whiteout or Giants. Thanks for watching.